Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mimo, your favorite Egyptian Arabic teacher. Today, as promised, I will be answering all the questions that you gave me on my Instagram story. If you're not following my Instagram, make sure you follow. All the links will be in the description below. Anything I mention, you'll find it below. So let's get to the questions right away. So I have the questions here in front of me. There's a bunch of them. Let's see. The first question says, Is it كان عندي? Why not كنت عندي? Now this question is talking about saying I had in Egyptian Arabic. How do we say I have first? We say the word and and then we put the possessive endings right after it. So عندي, عندك, عندك, عندكو, and so on. So how do I say I had in Egyptian Arabic? It's not a verb that gets conjugated like other verbs, okay? It's a special verb. So we say I was have, but it's also special <laughs> because it's not treated like adjectives. The word was here is can, and it's constant for everybody. We say, Anna can, andi, inta can, andak, inti can, andik, and so on. So this question is asking, why isn't it Anna kunt, andi? Literally, I was, have, yeah? Um, well, because can is making the word and past, not you were something, okay? So we're making the possession itself in the past, not you were whatever in the past. Does it make sense? When you say I was happy, you are describing yourself. You were happy. But when I say I had, now the possession is in the past, not you describing what you were in the past, if that makes sense. Let me know in the comments below. Let's look at the second question. Okay, the second question here says, I'm struggling with telling the time. It's more of a complaint, not a question. Well, I wish everybody would just take a look at my course, the third course. The first lesson actually addresses this. I explain in detail how to tell the time, but I will do it now very quickly. Well, to tell the time in Egyptian Arabic, you will need to know some basic vocabulary first and the numbers, of course. You'll need to know the numbers from 1 to 12, and you will need to know some fractions as well, like half, quarter, a third. So what are those words? You will see them. I'm going to show them here in front of you. Uh, we have to know roba, which is a quarter, nus, which is half, and tilt, which is a third. So let's say the time. Let's say, for example, the time is 1 p.m. exactly. We say, which is the time or the hour. Not واحد, because is feminine. Yeah. <clears throat> now, 105 is 1 and 5, 1 and 10. And then 115, we say, is the word that we learned. And then 120. 20 minutes is one-third of an hour, isn't it? 20, 40, 60. We have three 20s in an hour, so it's a third. So we say, It's one and 20, or one and a third. Now, 25, what do we say? We say it's one and a half without five minutes. Think, think with me for a moment. One and a half, that's 130, right? Take away five minutes, that's 25. I know it sounds like a math equation, that's how we say it. So we say, And then, and then, and then, when it's 140, we say it's two without stuff. So it's two without a third. If it's 40, then 20 missing or left until you go to 2 p.m. So, it's a illa tilt. Tilt is a third. And then, itnin illa rubba, which is two without a quarter. And then, itnin illa ashara, itnin illa khamsa, is a I hope that helped. Now, let's look at the third question. <clears throat> 
He pretended to be a doctor to trick. To trick who? I can't see the rest of that question. To trick people. Okay, to pretend here, we do have a word to say يتظاهر, but uh, in that case, we can say عامل. هو عامل نفسه. دكتور. يعني he's making himself a doctor, but he isn't, yeah? هو عامل نفسه دكتور علشان يضحك على الناس. هو عامل نفسه. He's making himself doctor علشان in order to. Uh, or to. يضحك. يضحك means to laugh. And it can also mean to cheat or to trick. علشان يضحك على الناس. To laugh on people literally means. That's what it literally, literally means. But يضحك على الناس means to cheat them, to trick them. And so on. Let's move on to the next question. How to say around, for example, around 2 p.m. We can say على الساعة 2, like by or around, or حوالي الساعة 2. What? What? When you're learning by yourself, what sources can we use on the internet which would help with EA, Egyptian Arabic? Well, first source you can use is my channel, my courses, you know, anything. And, um... There are a bunch of books. There is Kalimni Arabi series, but this is in Arabic only. So you would need a teacher if you don't know the letters and you can't read well. And um, you can, of course, watch, you know, YouTube vloggers, listen to podcasts, songs, so many things. But, of course, not as much as standard Arabic. Okay, let's see the next question. Again, same person. As an intermediate speaker, how to leave up to advance? And what all should an intermediate student want? Okay, so you're an intermediate student, and what should you learn to go and become advanced? People usually think they should keep learning new stuff, right? But I don't agree with this. If you are intermediate already, as you say, sometimes people overestimate themselves, what I advise you to do is to strengthen your foundation. Go back to the beginning and make sure that all the basics are there. You're not make you're not making mistakes with the basics anymore, the possessive endings, the object, you know those basic things that make you form sentences, make sure you strengthen those foundations really well. And I'm sure if you go back, there will you will find something that you missed before. I'm sure this will happen. It always happens. Um, the next question says is there only three tenses in Arabic? Yes, only three tenses, but we have like forms and stuff like that. Okay, what is bitifti? Okay, this verb yifti, uh, it's usually, um, it has a bunch of different meanings depending on context. If you're talking about religion, yani, if it's a big uh, uh, scholar of religion, we yifti, that means he's giving like his educated opinion on a specific situation where someone might be afraid of do committing sin. So they're not really sure what to do in this case, so they would go to the big scholar, and he will... Like, he will give them his educated opinion, which is not really in the books, but based on what he studied. And in a different context, when it's outside of this, then it would be... Someone just making up stuff, okay? Just lying about things. Um, I have to say, I like eating <laughs> salmon. Okay. أنا بحب أكل سلمون. أنا بحب أكل. بحب is I like or love أكل. Second verb in this sentence. And the second verb is like the first one, but without be, okay? And um, معقول. Yani, the word ma'ul, uh, it has a bunch of meanings also. The first meaning is, uh, like, you can say it's acceptable, it's enough. Yani, someone says, is this enough? You can say, ah, oh, ma'ul, like, it's enough. And ma'ul comes from the word a'l, which is mind. So, if you say mish ma'ul, that means it's not entering the mind. So, it's like, unbelievable. So when someone says something that's really shocking to you, this is the second meaning, yeah? You can say ma'ul, like, is it 
believable? Like, would it go to the mind, to the aql, right? Okay, let's look at um, the next question. Okay, so this question says, when do you use andi and when do you use ma'aya? In which uh, situation, yeah? Okay, that's a good question. Um, andi, as we mentioned in the beginning of this video, means I have. But ma'aya literally means with me. So, before you go out to leave, for example, your parents might ask you, do you have money with you? Before going out. And how would they say this in Egyptian Arabic? They wouldn't say, Inta andak filus. Filus means money. They would say, Inta ma'ak filus. Like, do you have money with you, in your pockets, in your bag? It's with you, it's on you. Because you can have millions, but they're in the bank or in something, but they're not with you, as in in your pocket, right? So that's the difference. So, andak filus. Yes, I have money in general somewhere, but ma'ak filus means you have it with you now, you know, to use right away. Okay, and uh, that was it. Surprisingly, the questions were not that difficult. Sometimes they're really challenging. Now that we are at the end of this video, I wanted to let you know that if you're interested in taking a structured like more, you know, step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, track to learn Egyptian Arabic, I have a course. It's actually, so far, it's three levels already, which is 24 lessons, okay? You can get them recorded, yeah? And each lesson uh, contains, you know, vocabulary, grammar, and a story to help you remember the words and all of that. And it gets harder as you go, so, so far, we have beginner one, two, and three. And I have another course which teaches you how to write Egyptian uh, Arabic. Like, you can say Arabic in general because it's the same letters anyway. But, of course, it focuses more on the Egyptian way of pronunciation. Because, for example, the letter that I'm showing you here, Qaf, we pronounce it A, eh, not Qa. So, we would say Awi right? Even if it's supposed to be kawi. Kawi, we do say it when it means strong, but when it means very, we say ewi. So, that's it. Everything I mentioned will be available in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, and see you soon. Yalla, ma'as-salama.